Hello and greetings from the Ayalon Valley in Israel. Before I start talking about the 15th of Ab, I'll just explain where it is that I'm standing. This is actually a vineyard. Here's some ripening grapes, for example. And another special thing about this spot is that once upon a time it was a border zone between different tribes. We know from the book of Joshua that Dan was to the west and southwest, to the southeast was the tribe of Judah, to the east the tribe of Benjamin, and to the north was the tribe of Ephraim. So now back to the 15th of Ab. This holiday, we were first introduced to it in Masachet Ta'anit, where in the last Mishnah, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel states that there were never any better days for Israel than the 15th of Ab and Yom Kippur. For on those days, the daughters of Jerusalem would borrow from one another white clothing. It had to be borrowed so as not to embarrass someone who perhaps didn't have of their own. And they would go out to the vineyards and dance and call out to the eligible young men asking for them to choose from amongst them a bride. And this festival in the vineyards, this courting ritual, is, is very similar to something described at the end of the book of Judges, except there it doesn't say what date it happened, just that it happened every year. And also, it wasn't the daughters of Jerusalem, it was the daughters of Shiloh, perhaps because this was before the temple was built in Jerusalem. Instead, we had the Mishkan in Shiloh. So now, the Gemara goes on to, to bring six different opinions of what great thing happened on the 15th of Ab, to make it on par with Yom Kippur. But what's missing, I feel, is an explanation of, of why this festival in the vineyards happens specifically on those two days, especially Yom Kippur, of all days to be dancing. So the first thing to point out is, is of course, the agricultural aspect. The 15th of Ab and Yom Kippur are more or less the beginning and end of the grape harvest in Israel. But I think there's a little bit more to it. Uh, so in order to explain that context, I prepared a little timeline here. So what I want to illustrate here is that these two dates are actually days of atonement and, and forgiveness for sins that we mourn on the fast days at the beginning of the summer. The first one is the 17th of Tammuz. Our rabbis teach us that the first tragedy of that day was that the first pair of tablets were broken. Moses comes down from Mount Sinai carrying the Luchot Abrit, and he sees the golden calf and he sees the people dancing, it says, with the calf and in response he shatters the tablets. And eventually we're forgiven for that on Yom Kippur. On that day, Moses brings a second pair of tablets signaling God's forgiveness for the sin of the golden calf. And perhaps that's why we dance on that day, to make up for the dancing with the golden calf. Except this time, instead of dancing with an idol and engaging in adultery, we're dancing with God. And we are dancing to find a marriage partner. And perhaps that's why the Mishnah says the daughters of Jerusalem danced. And in the Book of Judges, the daughters of Shiloh just the city where the temple and the Mishkan were, as if it were sort of an extension of the service in the temple and the Mishkan, a service of atonement. And the second date is the ninth of Ab. On that day, the first tragedy our rabbis teach us was the sin of the spies. They, wander, they tour the land of Israel for 40 days during the time of the ripening of grapes. They bring back grapes with them and also they bring back a bad report. And the people therefore reject the land. They see that produce and they reject it. And the punishment is wandering in the desert for 40 years and dying in the desert. But we are eventually forgiven for that, our rabbis teach us. And this is another opinion of what happened on the 15th of Ab. On the 15th of Ab, we're forgiven. And therefore, on that day, we, we dance in the vineyards to now celebrate the produce of the land instead of rejecting it. And so we have created essentially two different contrasting time periods. Between the fast, the three weeks, is a time when we mourn the broken relationship between God and Israel and also broken relationships with one another, the lack of unity, but we seek forgiveness and reconciliation during the next time period when at the very end of it God forgives us and we forgive one another. That's the climax, Yom Kippur, but we have to build towards it. So we have the 10 days of repentance and the month of Elul and the Salihat, but it all begins on the 15th of Ab when we focus simply on love because love is the motivation. It's what motivates us to fix our relationship with God and with one another and put in the work and the effort and be willing to forgive one another. And the 15th of Ab, as we mentioned, is the beginning of the grape harvest. Well, grapes produce wine, which is a symbol of love in the Tanakh, especially in Shir Shirim, where, for example, at the beginning you have your love is greater than wine. So wine is compared to love. And this identity of the day, Hag HaHaba, the festival of love, is the primary primary identity in Israel nowadays. It's been somewhat commercialized, 
but I think it's well rooted in the sources because another opinion of the great thing that happened the 15th of Ab is that on this day the different tribes of Israel were permitted to marry with one another. Before that, uh, it was forbidden for a man or woman from different tribe to marry because it could lead to a situation where the property, the inheritance, would pass from one tribe to another. But eventually it was decided that the interest of unity and being one nation uh, was more important and that we couldn't have this barrier of not being able to marry. So it was, such marriages were permitted despite the fact that it could lead to a sort of a blurring of boundaries between tribes. And that's what brings us to, first of all, where I am now, the border zone between tribes. But also I think it brings us to the present day because we don't have the identity of 12 tribes anymore really. But we have something similar. We have different communities with each their own distinct heritage that developed over centuries in the exile in different places around the Jewish world. But in the 20th century, all of that really was turned on its head. Ancient Jewish communities were destroyed, while at the same time, the state of Israel was established and the ingathering of exiles. Uh, and also, elsewhere in the Jewish world, really, you have an unprecedented, unprecedented level of, of mixing between Jews of different backgrounds and marrying one another, which leads us to sort of a dilemma. Because on the one hand, we have this, this value of unity and marrying one another, which is embodied by the 15th of Ab. But on the other hand, we have responsibility to uphold our heritage, our customs, our treasured traditions, and pass them on to the next generation, preserve them. So we need to ask ourselves questions like, you know, is marriage between Jews from different backgrounds something to be avoided or tolerated, perhaps encouraged? And if so, what can we do to ensure that our, our heritage is continuing to be passed on and preserved in some way, shape, or form, while at the same time not not being divided. So uh, I don't have any easy answers to these questions, but on the 15th of Ab, a day when we don't really do much to commemorate, I suggest we use it as an opportunity to, of course, celebrate love and enjoy the holiday, but also to, to think about these important issues and consider our future as a nation.